Today we're going to look at the top AI artists who've made it into Runway's Create a Partner program. We'll explore the techniques they use to push the boundaries of AI video. I was lucky enough to be accepted too, so at the end I'm going to demonstrate some tips and tricks I've learned and used in my last couple of films. If you've never used Midjourney or Runway or similar AI tools, this one might be a bit advanced, so check the link above. Let's get started. So we'll start with the Princess of Proms, Tatiana, and she's effectively been able to recreate the aesthetics of the movie Interstellar. Let's take a look at her short and calculated prompts, which she shares more of on Twitter. So AR 21 to 9 is a cinematic aspect ratio. It makes the image wider. Nolan used 2.40 to 1, which is pretty close to this. And the C10 gives a small chaos value. And what this means is Midjourney is going to vary the four images in the grid that it gives you so that you have a little bit more variety and can experiment better when you're not sure how to make the image yet. So in this next prompt, she uses Provia, which refers to Fujifilm Provia. And Christopher Nolan always shoots in film. So what this is going to do is give it film grain and some vibrant color despite it being a little bit muted. And in this last one, she uses the no parameter, which is a negative prompt telling Midjourney not to include much light in this case. So I'm going to use her prompt techniques and see if I can recreate more of Interstellar on my own. And as you can see, even without a reference image to tell Midjourney what to do here, the prompts alone are helping it look a lot like a Nolan film and we're not that far off. So on the topic of prompts, Nicholas introduced me to the prompt token for Ektar, and this is based on a type of Kodak film that will bring out details and make landscape and product photos much more vibrant. So using his prompts, I can get a natural color grade that fits the Italian landscape here, or add some serious realism to something like a Japanese kitchen. Habi is someone who's great to follow for tips and tricks as well, and he put out a really amazing Studio Ghibli inspired video. And you don't see many other AI videos with characters walking down a path with this good an animation, so I'm going to try and figure out what he was doing here. So to take a stab at recreating it, I'm going to animate a mid-journey image with Pika Labs and use Runway to remove the background. So under Runway's video editing tools, you choose Remove Background, you drag and drop in your Pika video or Runway video, and it's quite easy to create a mask on your subjects from there. So you click and add dots to them to help create the mask. There's also finer brush tools that let you get into the more nuanced details of who your character is. And you can choose to exclude certain parts as well. So with Runway, you could actually add your own background in here. I'm going to export it though with a green screen and edit it in Final Cut Pro. And there's an effect in Final Cut Pro called Keyer and that'll remove the green background for me. But most video editors will have some version of this that you can Google or you can just go back to Runway and do it all within there. And I think Havi probably overlaid beautiful butterflies on top, but I'm gonna go to Pika and just do a fast and scrappy animated background. And now using my video editor, I can mark keyframes in the animation to move the placement of my character. So even in my three or four second video, I can have him move along the X and Y axis and make it look like he's walking down that path. So then I could start to use something like a cross dissolve as a transition to create the appearance of that Studio Ghibli style movement. So Victor is someone who's crossing over real world art into AI and he creates these beautiful nature footage pieces. His images are using natural sunlight and he'll use studio light in his transitions from one shot to the other. So to take a stab at something similar, I'm going to use a prompt with the term macro photography, which refers to capturing a small subject like a flower at close range. And I include Kodak Portra, which is going to be good for underwater nature photos and give it some film grain. And then I'm going to cap it with F 2.8, which is an F stop number, which will give it some blur in the background and really focus on the flower. So last I'll include Tatiana's tip, which is the chaos value of 10, so we get four different images. All I need to do now is bring it to runway and use the camera control to pan it left at a slow speed, and then I can get a decent video with it. Uncanny Harry is great at getting dialogue with engaging body movement using tools like Wave to Lip. If we get nicked, if one whisper, one bloody whiff of this gets out, it's not the old thing I'm worried about, mate. It's me you'll have to deal with. But he's brought attention to how you can use HeyGen's new AI translation tool to help get movement-heavy dialogue. And you've probably seen 
videos using DID or HeyGen for dialogue, but they leave a lot to be desired. Hi, I asked you to do something. Now do the job. Get the job done. Harry showed us that you can create an AI video first, add audio, and use HeyGen's translation tool to make them work together. iPhone versus Android video. De acuerdo. Bienvenido al video definitivo de iPhone versus Android. So what I can do is create an animation and runway with a little more motion than what we're used to seeing, but not so much that we're going to risk blurring, and extend that clip, then take it to Video Translate by HeyGen, where what we're going to do is choose English, your accent, so this is English to English, and it's going to mimic the tone of your voice. But my first attempt did not pick up the face. It was too much of a side angle. I went for something afterwards that was much more camera facing and less blurry. And it actually did pretty well, except it got stuck on my bad Cockney accent a little bit. Hello, I am studying ISTD. My duty is to complete the job, do the job, get the job done, do the job, get the job done. Let's get it done. So hey, Jen seems to be the best of the other alternatives that I've seen for this. And you can see why. I asked you to do the job. Now do the job. Get the job done. So before we go into any more tips, there are many great creative partners to follow. So I've listed their socials for you and categorized them by what I think are their standout areas. They're listed in no particular order. Now onto some of my own tips, and I've figured out some guidelines that results in ChatGPT actually giving good prompts. And if you're storyboarding, this can save a lot of time. So you can tell it to use single words and phrases separated by commas, and then give you an aspect ratio, use film terminology, and do it in a specific order that makes for a better prompt. So now you can tell it to reference its own guidelines afterwards and add more to it. And the images that it gives you might be less creative than your own ideas, but it'll generally come out really well. So if you give it some good guidance here, it's going to make for a lot faster processes. So one thing that's been bugging me lately is we're seeing a lot of really good looking static AI videos, but I wanted to experiment with getting some movement in action. And the unfortunate reality is you have to sacrifice image quality a bit and get more animated looking videos. Otherwise, it's too jarring to see blurry, poor resolution in the action all of a sudden. All targets have been destroyed. Move to Sector 6. Hang on, it's spotted a rebel. So to get some AT-AT -AT movement, I'm going to use techniques like Runway's green screen that I showed before for Javi Lopez's techniques. And this time I will adjust the rotation for specific keyframes to get some bumps that sync with the AT-AT's movement sounds. And then what I can do is throw in some walkie-talkie and distortion effects over my voice to mimic the sound of a store trooper speaking through their helmet. Okay, okay, okay. Look, look, it's not too late for me to switch sides. So one other technique I tested is layering images over top of other ones, and this was to get more dynamic animations. So Canva is a free way to do it. You can also use Photoshop, though. But the idea is you want to give Pika and Runway something that really stands out from the layer behind it, so you can give them action-heavy text prompts that use that top layer for action. So last, I put out an abstract art film called Let Me Show You after learning that Runway's new camera control tools had a cool reaction to circular art. So you just prompt for circular artwork, help Runway understand what it is with a text prompt, and then you add very slow moving zoom in rolls. And the roll is very important 
because the rotation plays off the circular shape. So you can mix zoom in, zoom out, and reverse clips so that you have this kind of tunnel effect where it's moving through. For the credits, I used Ideogram to create art with text, and then I gave Runway some prompts for the concept of a splashing background. Then I got a video of a ring expanding around the robot and reversed it to give the effect of a pressure that caused the thing to explode outward with water. 